This show combines my, two of my least favorite things. <laughs> it does. Crafting <laughs> and beer. And talking about yourself. And seeing you. So and then, three of my least favorite things. Grab a beer, let's have some laughs, because it's time for Crafts and Crafts. I'm going to read this. It's important. You, you have notes uh, on camera? Well, well, usually I memorize it, but there's so much. It's quite verbose because you wrote it. Do you know who I am at all? If you weren't looking at this. Joel Shire. Very close. Joel Stein was a staff writer and columnist for Time Magazine for 20 years. That, this like dates you. It kind of gets yeah, people. Yeah, really old. Uh, can, he wrote uh, 22 cover stories, not that he was counting. Was a columnist for Entertainment Weekly, LA Times Magazine. He wrote two novels. There's no LA Times Magazine. These notes are horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I'm getting nervous. Uh, he wrote two books, uh, Man Made, A Stupid Quest for Masculinity, which I read, and In Defense of Elitism, he's an elitist, and um, Why I'm Better Than You and You're Better Than Someone Who Didn't Buy This Book. And I, I, I made the mistake of, I do research for these. Uh, yeah, it's great. <laughs> this is cut and paste because you wrote this. Um, I started reading that book today what was available that, for free on Amazon, right? when you get to preview like the first okay. like yeah, no, that's, 15 that's pages. Yeah. And <laughs> it is. And I started reading it and then I got mad. I kept scrolling and it was like, you're done because I was having a good time. Oh, I, really? I, yes. Okay. Um, and then uh, you taught at Princeton uh, and then you went to, I'm going to say, you went to Stanford. I'm going to say it so you don't have to say it. Oh, I'll uh, still say it. <laughs> Don't worry, I've dropped that a lot. Uh, you wrote for several sitcoms, and you were uh, a talking head on I Love the 80s, which I think that's, that's how I first that's heard That's what anyone knows me, yeah. Okay. And then you also were, um, uh, at one point, you had how many people on, on Twitter? No, you're okay. It's a working brewery. Yeah. Um, at one point, you had how many Twitter followers? You're driving people away with this Everyone, intro. Yes, exactly. Yeah. It's very long. And the planes, we were holding for planes, but now they're letting them go. How many followers, what's the most followers you ever had on Twitter? I, uh, they were all like given to me by Twitter. That's, that's not, okay. not your, your yeah. So, I never reached a million. But it was, it was right around there. Lower, like 800, yeah. Cheers, and by the way, okay. uh, this, this is uh, Smortal Frenemy. It's a bourbon barrel aged imperial stout, it is 12%. So that's why we have so little of it, right? That's exactly okay. right, yeah. It's very nice. That's delicious. It's now, delicious. Now, we seem angry. I am. I'll tell you why. I'm not a beer drinker. Okay. I don't. I, I, this will be the only beer I may have this entire year. When's the last time you, you had a Michelada you mentioned recently at a ball game? And, uh, end of last season. But that was yeah, a. But that was a macro. I, I, I guess that right? was this year, right? That was the end of the baseball season. Of, yeah, but no, that, no, 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 that was end of last year. Sorry. But it wasn't like a craft beer. It was definitely not a craft beer. So when's the last time you had a craft beer? Well, if I have a beer, I yeah. usually have either something that looks like this, but it could yeah. be a Guinness or something. Yeah. And um, this show combines my, two of my least favorite things. <laughs> it does. Crafting <laughs> and beer. And talking about yourself. And seeing you. So and three of my least. <laughs> no, I love seeing you. But, <laughs> but honestly, and so far, this is going great. This is yeah, delicious. This is fantastic. This is almost like it. tastes like So a we've port. changed one of them. This has like a whatever that port kind of like. You, uh, what, so what you're getting is you are. Like, so they'll take a bourbon barrel, and, and I have the brewer back here who will not correct me if I'm wrong with any of my information. You put it into the, the bourbon barrel, and there is still bourbon in there. So it's picking up the oak, it's also taking in some of the actual bourbon. And a bourbon barrel is like a used wine barrel, right? Yeah, correct. Okay. Well, it depends. Is a bourbon barrel a used wine barrel? It depends. I think, no, I think bourbon, American bourbon needs to be a new oak barrel. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so whiskey, oh, yeah. whiskey could have something that it was used for, but bourbon would be a new, and then it, So we're and getting it, a lot of that oak mm -hmm. and a little bit of bourbon? A little bit of bourbon, And that's sure. why it tastes like that, but yeah, it has like you, that fruity, porty, like... If you get the nose, you definitely get both of those things when you smell it. It's really delicious. It's delicious. Yeah. It's delicious. Um, and that's Franklin. Okay, This so, is going to be my beer of choice from now on. Well, be careful. Okay. 12%. There's some science behind that. So, so most beer, most like macro beers are about 4%. Okay. Okay, so this would be three times that. So if you were to have like a 16 ounce, you'd be having uh, three beers. But um, the, the higher the alcohol content, the more contact it has with your, with your stomach that is absorbed. So it gets absorbed more quickly. That's like- But this you, is like wine. But this if you have a- 12%, yeah. I'm fine. I don't think wine's 12%. Sure it is. 
Is American? It? Like big is American wine? Josh, what, what ABV is wine? Well, you're the expert. What is going on? Like 14? Uh, 12 to 14%. Yeah. Why? yeah. Aren't you the alcohol guy? So Didn't you, haven't you done like tons of stuff? Yeah, but hold on. Can we start? You the, are you guys ready to roll? <laughs> no wonder you were drunk all the time. You had no idea <laughs> I don't what was pay going attention. on. I don't pay attention. Um, so yeah, it's about the same as wine. Can you cut it so that's what it looks like I, I responded to? incredible. Um, okay, so now we have this and then we have, we're following it with the, um, the gang goes to Ireland, which is a dry stout. Nice. That's more I can I can have a few of those. It's good. A little smoky. Would you call it a session beer? I would call that 4.5. I'd call okay. that a session beer. Uh, Josh, the answer is yes. Would you call this a session beer? Absolutely. Okay. Okay. It's nice. It um, it feels like a refined Guinness. You could say that. Right? Yeah. Like it has. A, it's a little more subtle. Sure. It's a little. Sure. Um, but it's got that like malty kind of yeah. like. Um, Maybe not malty. Maybe it's fantastic. But this is yeah, coffee. This is what you're gonna order from now on when you go out. Well, yeah, because it's like this is like after dinner, and then hence, hence this glass. Yeah, it's just it it enters your bloodstream. It's it, so basically at the end of that. In conclusion, um, so I know things about certain things, but not things about other things. Is that this will hit it, even though it's it's like it's like as strong as three beers, it'll kind of hit you like four. Right, which is why I can't. I I can drink wine at dinner and not really get drunk, but as yeah. soon as someone hands me a cocktail, yeah. which I will avoid, it hits me hard. Because it goes so fast. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's because it's this is delicious. Okay. Um, so that's all I got. That's all I kind of prepared. Are we done? We are done. This is I, great. He, I, here's what I did. Because okay. you are a prolific author, okay. I um, had uh, AI write all my questions. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. Yeah. So, but let's talk well, this about- This will be better then. It will be, it will, yeah. well, so will your writing. Um, so let's talk about that. Okay. Because the interesting thing is. Um, it seems lazy. I was like, well, it can't, <laughs> wait, what seems lazy? You said, I you said we should talk about it. Well, yeah, but, but we, but like if, if um, like, I was gonna say that, that uh, writing is the world's oldest profession. But I, but I think that when you refer to that, you call it prostitution. But I don't think that yeah. that's, I think, no, it's, people, I think it's farming. Most of human uh, experience, there was no writing. Yeah. People only figured out how to write pretty recently. It's not natural. Like the yeah. speaking yeah. Uh, comes a priori into your brain. We all yeah. know how to, to speak, believe it or not, but writing has to be taught. Ah, and that's why people can, they, there's, there's people who are, are illiterate that can have conversations. Yeah, for most yeah. of human history, yeah. people didn't write. And they then passed it along. only recently yeah. do most people write. Yeah, it's a weird thing we've asked people to do. So I was thinking about this today on the drive over. <laughs> um, and that is that like, we are, we are asking a lot of our brains. So, you know, driving at 60 miles an hour, not something that I think our brains were ready to do. Um, writing, um, computing, multitasking on, on some pretty extreme levels, keeping up with the computers, everything, watching TV, and like, you know, we basically, I, and I don't know this, like we basically have like the same brains that we had 300 years ago, and we weren't making our brains do all these things, and now we have the same brains that we're like, we're kind of hitting them so hard. I don't know. I think the brain is, is a tool that can do many, many things. So I'm not worried about you think like. Think it was equipped to do that 300 years ago. Yeah, yeah. for sure. I, I, you know, I'm more concerned about like AI, hormonal things we're asking our bodies to okay. do, which is like the amount of dopamine hits that we're getting used to having oh, per hour. That's interesting. Is right. really kind of like resetting our where we stand yeah. when we're not getting the dopamine uh -huh. hits to a level of anxiety and depression that we uh, can't really handle. That's interesting. I've never thought about it like that. So, yeah, so it's like a seesaw. So the more yeah. dopamine hits you have, your body resets. Yeah, you're up, you're, you're down, you're up, you're down. You're, Whereas You're up, you keep going up, Yeah. right? You're like, oh, I don't feel good. I'm gonna yeah. look at my phone or whatever it is. Yeah. I'm gonna right, buy something right, from Amazon, right, right. I'm gonna drink a beer. I need someone to like my picture, Porn, yeah, right. Whatever it is. And then, um, but then your base level goes down, like literally goes down uh -huh. hormonally from where you were. So you're kind of like bummed all the time and then you right. need it more and then you're bummed all the time and then like kill yourself. Whereas, yeah, whereas like, For real. like 300 yeah. years ago, you were like just, your baseline was higher and then you caught a yeah. fish. I, here's what I was thinking you, today. Was, you, yeah. you were so bored 
all the time yeah. back then uh -huh. that when the opportunity to go to war and probably die came, you were like, of course. Yes. I go see another city give and me, like. Yeah, give me yeah. some excitement. I will go fight because that's all there yeah. was to do. Can you, can you be a favor? In the plastic case, I have two metal rulers. I would like them brought to me. Please do not look me in the eye. Um, so here is our activity for today. Okay. This is crafts and crafts. We got one craft, two things craft I beer. Yeah. But so far <laughs> yeah. going great. You don't, you hate arts and crafts? Hate. You're, you're gonna like this one. Okay. Uh, I liked them as a kid though. Well, this is something, well, okay. And my son likes them. So this is something that was maybe, you know, like when you were a kid, you were doing arts and crafts. Wait, can I guess what we're gonna do? Sure. Is it involve these two bucks? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So you think- are you, now, now you're excited. I am excited okay. if I'm right. Okay. So in my last, book okay. in defense of elitism. The first third of the book, I go to this, I, I, tr I found the county in America that the highest percentage of Trump voters in the 2020 election. Yeah, uh, so, 2016 election, so, uh, sorry. Uh, Miami? It's called Miami, but yeah. Miami, you, okay, got so it. So I went to, no, why would you know that? It's spelled Miami. Yeah. It's, so I went to this small town in the- um, oh, it's, oh, it is spelled, it's spelled so in Miami. your book, yeah. I see, and then I, someone I said it. I tried to explain it in the book. Yeah, got so, it. So um, the panhandle of Texas, yeah. very religious. Uh, oil and gas and that's on ranching. The, sorry, but that's on the, the east. No, 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 the panhandle, uh, like next to Oklahoma, the part where it like sticks up. Oh, that up. panel, the up one. Yeah, okay, yeah. got it, okay. Um, and I met all these very religious people. Mm -hmm. And one thing, two of the people I met did was they would take old Reader's Digest books, mm -hmm. which are softer than this. Okay. So that, if, if what we're doing is what I think we're doing, it might not be. May not, yeah. These are not the perfect books for it. And they would carve them into crosses. Okay. And uh, I have one in my house, and then they would like affix a bow or something, and they oh. have these in their house, and they're and you can do. You know, they also would do other things, like a bandsaw. They also do a. Car. Usually, when I have uh, guests of Jewish descent, right? You don't do crosses. I don't do many crosses. I don't do as many crosses they as I would do. They didn't feel that way down there. Yeah, they were still into the crosses. <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't care. You're Jewish, but you still you still believe in but Jesus. Did, they did yeah. like he did a car for my son. Mm -hmm. Um, but I realize now that I've said that we don't have like a bandsaw. We're, we're probably we don't have a bandsaw. Oh, so wait, can I guess again? Yeah, please. I, so I think I was wrong. Okay. <laughs> I think we're gonna make a secret compartment to hide yes, stuff. Is exactly that right? right? Okay. Exactly right. We're making so so what did I've you, done. Did you ejaculate on this <laughs> book? What? <laughs> this the is my plate. No, this is I made these. Oh, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. Okay. So I so so I I made these. So last night what I did was I took the first 20 pages. Oh, I'm so sorry. And I, no, it's okay. fine. And, and because look, at the end of the day, it sits on a shelf. It's supposed to be a book. Now people are gonna know if you go to my house and you want to know where my is, it's in this. I'm glad I got the Grisham over the Dan Brown. Do you? Yeah. Well, I, I took two. I'm embarrassed to have that on my shelf. I, this, yes, but I took two books that I was like, yeah, I can with these books. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, and so what I did was. Um, you can mess with my books as long as you buy them. I don't care what you would do. Would that be them. amazing if I'd use do your? Do not books? care <laughs> at all. Be thrilled. I should, I should have done it. Yeah. Um, okay. So what I did was I took the first 20 pages and glued them together. Mm -hmm. Then I put plastic in inside. Oh, oh. So the idea is if someone picks up this book, yes, they would. Well, well, other yeah, than your yeah. I, I was I was debating on just leaving them loose. But the idea is, oh, you, you, they, they'd fall for the, for, they'd fall for the. Well, they wouldn't know because well, they would. Why are they gonna pick up a Grisham book in your house? But they could read it a little bit, and it wouldn't be until no, later. But yeah, but you, but you're right. It does look like there's a jacket, but there's it's glue. Yeah. Like I glued those together. But in fact, before you picked it up, it was very nicely sort of. I'm sorry. <laughs> I shouldn't have. I was so eager yes, for something right. I don't like to do. But okay. what I did do is okay. Then I put a piece of plastic here, flipped it upside down, and then I took a brush and I glued. I painted you did a glue nice on job. here. You did a Thank nice Thank you job. so much. I painted on glue so that this is basically like has become like a brick. And then we're gonna, what would you recommend we hide in here afterwards? Is it like a gun? Uh, a gun won't fit in here. I don't think a gun, I was gonna say, if you wanted to bring your gun, you could probably have a small revolver that mm -hmm. went in there. Oh. You could have a knife, but I was thinking just a compartment. Drugs. Drugs could go in there. What else? For, to uh, reset your dopamine levels. Um, money. Money, um, money. Money, yeah. You know treasure, what? just treasure. Treasure. Treasure Treasure that you have around the house. So what like I've done Like your rings, is, are those aura rings or are those treasure? The, um, these are, this is my wedding ring, but if you want it, you could oh. to put it in your book. No, no, that's wrong. Okay. This is, this is my engagement ring my wife bought for me. I don't like the face. I don't know. I don't like the expression. <laughs> I gave her a ring, and then we were in Hawaii, and she bought me this, which is made of koa wood. It's not really like a... Okay. I know that, yeah, that's great. Should we... Well, so thank you so much to Joel Stein for being a guest. And okay, that was, no, that was no. I think that my was my first fun. book was called Man Made, and I, <laughs> yeah. I tried to learn how to be a man, <laughs> and the, I'm care. just thrown by the um, engagement ring yes. made out of well, wood. Yeah, but it's great. Well, it's great. Okay, so if we um, 
Can can you grab? I have a, a, a box of pencils that I should, but I was I was getting nervous about uh, Joel sh showing mm -hmm. up today because I thought he was going to criticize me. But um, if I uh, <laughs> okay, so here's what I did. Yeah. I had uh, AI right. write a biography about you. Okay. And the thing well, is, that's become a thing. I was going to do a story on. Um, yeah. There was, I don't know if this is still going on, but when Chat GPT 3 first came out, yeah. if you came out with a book, like you had a book coming out, uh -huh. or something coming out, someone, I couldn't figure out who, was making biographies of the author or the person through Chat GPT 3 and putting them on Amazon too, I think in the hopes that you get confused. And instead of buying the book you wanted to buy, buy the biography of this person that was written by Chat GPT three. Oh wow! Does so that make sense? What I tried to describe? Uh, no. Okay. Can you try it again? I'll write it. I'm better in writing. Um, so here, th all you're doing with this pencil, I I'm over doing things. So what you have to do is you're gonna basically like take a square. I love as soon as you do crafts with someone, the person who's doing the craft gets so desperately serious about it. And they so. Oh, oh, you're so, saying other episodes that I've done? No, no yeah, you just. Did you, you did you you saw the one with Greg? Yeah, and you're, you get so desperate to get the task done. Uh, I love it. So I, you keep in mind as I'm doing it in pencil that I'm making a square or, or sort of a. See? Yeah. See, you just don't and then, really care. And then now, yeah, no, I'm, I have very little interest in you at this point. Yeah. Um, you have a Greg Fitzsimmons story that's that's I do. possibly uh, NSFW. No, it's very safe for okay, work. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, if if this, this is work, okay, I guess I, in some ways yes, for yes, you. Yes, yes. That's amazing. If I'm not drinking, then but you I are. Wish, yes, you are. I, 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 but I am drinking. Okay, so it's is it the top and the bottom one. too, one width. Yeah, yeah. So I'm you're making sure a rectangle. Too. Okay. Yeah. So um, the idea was to do it lightly, so that when the criminal, you know what? By the t by the time the criminal has opened, I can this erase up, it. It's a pencil. We're fine. Okay. Jesus. Fair, fair, fair enough. Okay. Fair enough. You know, my first Choose job your weapon. ever. I know which one I want, but that's because I pulled it out. Did, did, I'm just going to take it. My first job ever out of college yeah. was working for Martha Stewart. I had so seen that. Okay. I'm a little ready for. Oh, these. Did, did you put this on here? No. No, and now I'm afraid to take it off. This is like some sort of you? protective. You're, just, you're really yeah. nervous. Thank you. <laughs> you and would we just you, hack at this thing? You now, would rip it. No, I think. So I've, I've never done this before, but I think what you do is you just start. Kind of going I think we down. need bigger equipment than this to destroy a book. Well, you think the Nazis went at books with like this? Yeah, but they weren't preserving the the book to hide their. I don't know. This doesn't seem like it's, we'll be here for hours. Well, yeah. I mean, I mean. Oh, okay. Theoretically, right. twenty minutes. The only thing is, please, do not cut yourself off camera. Do you not have any? No, 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 no. I, if if you do it, I want it to be in the oh, show. Oh, It'd be oh, yeah, yeah, amazing yeah. for. Uh, ratings. How far? Like a we should go deep, right? Yeah, but the thing is, is what you're doing is you're just kind of going. So we have to a do little... this like hundreds of times. Theoretically, do you have some place to be? No. no. Point <laughs> taken. <laughs> I don't like. So I did get metal rulers instead of, um, uh, you know, like wooden rulers. You know, I will say this is one of the few craft projects where I, I see myself actually keeping this and using this. So, all jokes aside. Oh, that some, wasn't a joke. Some, I'm, some, I was serious. Well, I, I, pre I was prefacing what oh. I was about to say, is that I, I like to make things for the guests and like cater the craft to them, so it is in fact something that they would like to I have. Would. We have a huge. Um, one of the reasons we bought our house is it, when you walk into the main room, there is a, it's a very tall room, much like this room, mm -hmm. as tall as this, and there's a ladder. I get a it. Library. I, I get it. You have a huge, huge house. That's all I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> okay, it's all together across. But this can go in the library. Yes. Well, the only thing as I was thinking is like, now that people know what it is, like a criminal who's watching the show. But it's such a big library, you have to go through. You have to oh, yes, they know which book. They now. know what book it is. Oh, you have to do, yeah. you know what you do? Put a cover on it. That's a good idea. By the way, I hate covers on books. Me too. So I, I tried to get them to let me write my last book without, really? so it looks like this. Oh, yeah. And I, in fact, I, you know who got it away with that recently was um, what Rick this? Rubin's book has no cover. It's just beautifully written on here. That's, that's very Rick Rubin. By the I way. know, but, but is, it, is that was that, is that was that the point of it? Is this like no? It just I'm looks like about... a it looks like a beautiful thing. Whereas yeah. they make you put this cheap plastic cover mm -hmm. on it because they can put marketing material on it. They put uh, the blurbs. Yes. And the, oh, I see. It's all about marketing. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, how many pages are you getting out per? I think I'm cut? getting like seven. So you you are right. This is taking a while. Can I and read the first? Can we each yeah. read the first sentence? Yeah. Uh, mine. Fuck it. 
Uh, my well, I'll read. I'll read where I am here. And you're reading from Dan Brown. Dan Brown, Angel, uh, Angels and Demons. Um, which? How many times have you read this book? Probably six. Six times. As the pair hurried on, Langdon. Wait, what? Uh, Langdon, who would be our uh, protagonist. Okay. Is this the uh, first sentence? Well, no, I, I. Well, go to the first. That's how do you follow that? Well, you, I thought you didn't include no, the first no, page. I said I did, and then you. <laughs> if it's that important to you, do I have to, do I have to open the prologue or? No, just the regular. I, how about the author's note? No, no, I want the first <laughs> sentence. First sentence is key. <laughs> okay, here we go. Oh, here we go. Okay, we got the cover page. Um, this is like a Dan Brown adventure, <laughs> just to read it. <laughs> it is. Um, okay. Let me keep working over here. Um, okay, so I'm just going to peel this one back, and I reveal. Why don't, as I do this, why don't you read me the first? Okay, that's good. What, what is that? Uh, this is, a, I've never read a John Christian book. Really? Yeah, and this oh. is The Rainmaker. This is my first time reading Have any sentence. Have you seen sentence. the movie? The movie The Rainmaker? Yeah. No, no, it was a movie. It's a movie. My decision Isn't to, it? I don't, I don't know. I know what a Rainmaker is, so I'm, I'm already well informed. It's, the st it's like those things that you turn upside down? No, it's the person who brings in money to the firm, like the guy oh. who brings in the clients. I was trying to be funny. Um, um, well, I don't know if I'll be able to get... This isn't about being funny. This is about John Grisham. Okay. Apparently not. <laughs> my decision to become a lawyer was irre irre irrevocably. That's hard. Mm -hmm. My decision to become a lawyer was irre irre irrevocably sealed. Why would you... If it was difficult the first time, <laughs> why did you try to go back and redo it? <laughs> it was skill building. <laughs> sealed. When I realized my father hated the legal profession. I'm not sold to keep reading. Give him one more sentence. I was a young teenager, clumsy, embarrassed by my awkwardness. I was a young teenager? As opposed to what other ages could you be? 13, 14 compared to 18, 19. Okay. Clumsy, embarrassed by my awkwardness, frustrated with life, horrified of puberty, about to be shipped off to a military school by my father for insubordination. I'm, now I'm, yeah, uh, now yeah. I'm more into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah me yeah, too. Yeah. He was an ex-Marine who believed boys should live by the crack of the whip. I'm in. Yeah. I'm into it. Physicist Leonardo Vetra smelled burning flesh, and he knew it was his own. Tremendous. He stared. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yours took a few sentences to get there. He stared up in terror at the dark figure looming over him. What do you want, La Chavre? The raspy voice replied. The what? The, show. the password. Oh. But I don't. The intruder pressed down again, grinding the. Something, white hot object deeper into Vetra's chest. There was his, there was the hiss of broiling flesh. I am now realizing what a horrible decision you've made to make this your hiding place book. Because people are going to be, they're going to be ripping open to read the prologue. No, no, and no. And they'll be like, what, there's money in here? His books are about like searching for things and trying to find things. It's, true. it's like give, give it's it, true. Give it's, it away. This right is there. like national treasure. Yeah, like, like you see this mess that Joel. I like to read a book. <laughs> I like the book. <laughs> you haven't read one. Okay, here we go. Okay, so this is going to take hours. I don't think it's going to take hours because at the end of the day, now here's here, this is step one. Ugh. Step one. Yeah. What? But there'll be a hole. Why do we need a step two? Because what we're going to we can put more glue in it and then we can line it with. Uh, felt if we want, but we don't have to. The thing is, is like, then what? So it looks good for the criminal <laughs> as he steals your shit? You know, I realize I don't own anything nice. Like, what would I put in here? Mm. What do you own that you could put in here? Well, how about this? It could be, it could be like the red herring. Like, you could put in like <laughs> fake jewels. But I don't have a herring. Like, I don't have the thing that I want to distract this people from. This book would be the red herring because now people know if they go into mm -hmm. Joel's house, mm -hmm. they're looking for that book because it have, has what may be treasure or it might be costume jewelry mm -hmm. that looks expensive. Mm -hmm. And they're like, ha ha, and they run away. And then they don't take your computer with all your writings. Oh, I, it's all in the cloud. I don't own anything that I care about. Do you own anything you care about? Um, whenever I think about, like, if my house was on fire, the first thing I would do, besides getting my wife out, would be the animals, mm -hmm. of which there's plenty. What are you, Noah? How many animals? Thirteen at the, at the present, Is that true? present time. Yeah. Is that really true? Yeah. We, my wife and I have a, an animal rescue Th called, pumpkin, called Pumpkin Patch Pet Rescue. Yeah. During the pandemic, there was one day where we had 23 cats and 13 dogs. We, what we do is we kind of get them, 
like if there's if there's a special needs animal or if there's a an animal that's in a shelter a kill shelter that we know is like on the chopping block here's what i've learned your okay. wife is incredibly hot <laughs> yes yes because i've met these animal saving people uh-huh and they're all, uh, they're all basically ex Cat Playboy models. And yeah, like that's true. Every time. That's true. There was a Wait, oh, have you not met my wife? No. Oh, that's so funny. There's a chapter in yeah, my she's book pretty. where I went, because I don't do well with animals, to be a man, I decided to have a dog for a week. So I met all these animal <laughs> yes. people that loan you foster animals, whatever. Okay. And each, not really a business, but okay. Well, you're right, wasn't it? <laughs> they were charities. They were. There was uh, someone helping you with your book. It wasn't like, hey, yeah, can I have no. a dog for a week? Well, that's what I said. Yeah. And they and you can't just get a dog for a week. They were like, right. no, we have to t come to your house and look at it and test yeah, you. Yeah, that's right. And I was like, really? Because this dog is going to die if I don't take it. Yeah. Like, what? Like, but well, once and it, all these women were beautiful. Right. And so if that's a misconception, then the one that no, I had. No, they were beautiful. But but when I was in, no, that one, that one is correct. Okay. But when I was um, at a pet co one time, year, before I met my wife, I mean, like 15 years ago, there were these kittens. And they're for adoption. I'm like, I'll take it. That's great. They're like, okay, uh, we need to schedule a home visit. Yeah. Kind of, I'm like, wait, what? I, yeah. So it, here's the thing. If you go into a shelter, which if you want an animal, go into a shelter. Like there, you don't have to pass anything, whatever. But, but, but once there's it, no hot women. There are not. Well, why am I going to do why, that? Why are you doing yeah. it? Yes. And so at that point, once they, once they get into the foster system, mm -hmm. there's really no rush. What, what they're trying to do, what we're trying to do, and really what she's trying to do is just find the best home for, for someone, so for, for an animal. Was she an actress? Was she like, what? No, she no, she's a unicorn. She, re she really is. She was, she's just beautiful and she, and she's a voracious reader and she rescues animals and she's, yeah. She's, wow. She's pretty unique. I thought you had met her at some point. No. She, I mean, she worked in my, she produced my show. So if you would have, you were there, you just weren't paying attention. I would have paid attention. Um, okay, so AI, here we go. The, uh, and then I'll tell you my Greg Fitzsimmons story. Well, let's do that first. Okay. So I'm uh, 23 years old, and I've got a writing job working for a Time Out New York magazine. Okay. Living in New York. Living in New York. Okay. Is it a bad sign that the blade's gone? What do you need? Uh, you lost your, your blade. <laughs> it was precarious. Oh, oh, here precarious. it is. Here it is. Do you yeah. know how to ins reinsert it? I do, I, but I have other options. I'm going to go with another option. Yeah. I want something stronger. Yeah, well, this feels like that, and it's got the plastic uh, it, sheet. It just needed to be tightened. It's good now, I think but you're doing I'm gonna try a this. Decent job. I thought that I would be using the the ruler the whole time. No, you don't need it once you start. I don't think so. Yeah. Actually, you know what? Now that I'm. Oh, using this it, is better. I'm... Oh, you. I'm gonna move much faster than you. Okay, so I'm like. 20... Don't move fast. To, don't try to compete. When there's okay. knives involved, crafts people try isn't to... about competing. That's the thing about it art. It doesn't feel like a craft at this point, does it? It feels like more like a job. <laughs> uh, okay, yes, Greg Fitzsimmons. So Greg Fitzsimmons, for context, people uh, watching and listening, is uh, he's a very well-known comedian. Uh, he was a writer on uh, Ellen. He's written for a lot of things. He's a, I believe, he's a four-time Emmy winner. And for, for Ellen, something. Okay. A Wikipedia him. Not for the thing I'm about to tell you about. Okay, got it. And he uh, he's directing my my stand-up special, uh, or maybe by the time this comes out, has directed it. Uh, okay. This isn't coming out. For it's a while? not live. Oh. Um, so I was like, I just got a job at Time Out New York, and there was a show on MTV, like a trivia show, that was coming out, and I uh, I called up so I could write it. You know, I write articles in which I do stuff. Okay. And I thought, oh, I, I'll go on this. Maybe I can get on the show. As a as a right contestant. As a contestant. Got it. Right about it. It's like a you know a trivia show on MTV. And so I call up, and I I kill it on the, like you have to call in and they ask you questions and okay. I killed it. And then they like brought you down in person and I killed it again. Just like really high score. So they put me on the first week of this show. Oh, wow. Yeah. It was I thought you were gonna say like they were apprehensive. They didn't want people that were actually that good at things. No, it was, well, I was good at it for MTV. This wasn't Jeopardy. Okay, got yeah. it. So, um, oh, and I, you were a young guy. You I was fresh out of Stanford. <laughs> which I'm required to say several times throughout this okay, interview. Okay, so I go down to be on the show, which was called Idiot Savants. Uh-huh. And um, you got, had... They so, got the idiot finally. Right? Yeah, well, yes. And the host of this show was Greg Fitzsimmons. Oh, wow. Yeah, you were waiting for the Greg Fitzsimmons part. Also, uh, so he would have been like 28. Huh, is that right? Yeah, he's 57 now. He's six God, years older. It's so funny because yeah. he felt much older than me at the yeah. time because he had a job. And <laughs> he had a job. He was hosting a show. Yeah. And hair, maybe. No, I don't think he had hair. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, he, he never had hair. Um, 
So he, <clears throat> I'm on the show, and uh, I get very nervous in life. Okay. And you were on, the thing about the show is you were on for all five episodes, the whole week. Oh, got it. It was an elimination. Well, each day was an elimination. And if you got eliminated, you sat in the dunce corner with a dunce cap. Oh, wow. Yeah. And um, if you won for the day, you took the subject that you were a savant in, and they put you in a chamber and they like fired questions at you really fast. Okay. And I had uh, been a fact checker at, at TV Guide. Okay. So I just, and I liked the show Taxi, and I knew there was a taxi book. Okay. And I had a quiz in the back. Okay. So it was like lazy MTV writers are just going to use this quiz in the back. Got so it. I'll just memorize this 20 question quiz. Okay. Course, right? So I get on the show and I'm just, it's just panic. I don't know how to handle this. Okay. And everyone else is fine with being on TV. As you can tell, not me. Yeah. And, um, is I that just, why you're drinking now? Yeah. And so I just can't stop pressing the button as soon as he starts asking a question. He does not get to finish any questions. So you, and do you answer them? Yeah, but incorrectly, because I don't understand oh, the question. Oh, wow. Constant. Oh, got it. It's so bad that at some point, he asks a question. There's a category that's like, it's like three actors, Keitel, Walken, or someone else. Okay. And there's four contestants. And the three of them ring in, or two of them ring in. So there's only one answer left that's possible. Oh. So I, I, I yeah, can nail it. Yeah, yeah. But I panic and just repeat the person before me. I say, walk in. Well, that's and, amazing. And uh, and Greg Fitzsimmons just kind of like walks over to me from his host stand and hugs me and says, are you okay, buddy? <laughs> right? Wait, wait, in the show? Yeah, in the show. <laughs> and it's so good. Oh my God. And you know, all my friends are there because I'm young and friends will go to things. Uh-huh, uh-huh, that's right. Family's watching. And then on the final day, I did get it together and somehow win. And then they put me in this booth and they asked me the questions straight from this taxi book. You were right that they did. So they give you like a minute and I did it in like 15 seconds. Because they would get three words in and I knew the question. So I would yeah. just say, $1.27. They, they, yeah. It, was, it looked like something was very wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then they gave me a trip to a ski trip, which I never took because I had a year to take it and I paid like $300 in taxes. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, sure. So I lost money on that show. <laughs> That's, you know, it's, it, it's funny because, you know, like the trip was for, um, you know, like promotional consideration. So the trip was free to them. But not to me. Yeah, so like, because in your mind, it's like, I'd rather have the money. Yeah, so at the end of the day, you, you lost. I did. I always wondered if there, if we'd ever be shooting one of these shows when this truck showed up. <laughs> oh. But what is it? It's like a I meant, I meant because of the beeping sound, but now I'm noticing that it's a Brazilian pastel. Can you get a shot of that, Shane? Brazilian fast food, this sounds, uh, Yeah. I'm, in I'm interested. Well, I got it for you because I thought maybe, I know you were a fan of the show Taxi. Yeah. <laughs> and I asked for a yellow truck to show up. Um, that's so funny. And so wait, have you, you've talked to Greg's, have you guys run into each other since? I felt like he was on those best of the 80s type shows yeah, too. Yeah, but we didn't get to meet each other. Those yeah, you're, yeah you just shot out in front of a green screen or something, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, so this is, this is a bit verbose. I know how you don't like me to read long well, things. How, uh, verbose, how about that Greg Fitzsimmons story? <laughs> Jesus Christ, I was telling it, I was like, am I only halfway through? <laughs> Oh shit! Yeah, yeah like, wow. We got it. Should we just do a two-parter? Um, I, I do have a question about the craft. Yeah, look, both these guys are so interested. They're both on their phones. They've been on their phones. Though. I don't blame them. That's I was. Fine. I don't I wish I could take my phone out. Well, I have a question about this craft. Okay. Originally, when we started, I figured we had to go to the end, the bottom of the book. But now I'm realizing we probably don't. We don't have to. How uh, far down are we supposed hey, to go? Hey, Nick, can you just put like the the recycle uh, bucket right here, so I can just because otherwise I'm making a huge mess. What, what page do we need to get to? I mean, it, I, I think the bottom. Oh, we do? I yeah. think that's going to be, you're much further than Well, the me. thing is, you, you, don't, you, don't, you, you can't multitask. You can't talk, but if, maybe if I do the talking. But this is a whole problem is, with it, this idea of the is, show, it, then. Because it's a show about you. But you no, have but, a show in which you can't multitask. But the thing is, is like, I just was thinking like, about this show. Is like, A, I'm good at crafts. Oh, is that why you did this? Yeah. And also. When did you learn you were good at crafts? When I was very young, I, well, I, I won like a bunch of awards. I, I was a there's uh, no crafting awards. What do you mean? No, no, for, for art. Oh, you did. And so I, yeah, I won like this blue ribbon thing, and oh, and that's then good. and then I and then I went to college and got my degree in 
fine art with a, oh, really? a focus in oil painting. Really? I was where, the last oil painter on this planet. Where uh, where did you do that? Well, that's not important. Um, <laughs> Wait, why? Cor Cortland College, because I know that you're an elitist. No, but art I don't know anything about, so that seems impressive. Cor I, so where, I, I where's Cortland? Cortland is, uh, is in, uh, it's just south of Syracuse, Newark. Okay. It's, uh, it's literally the, it's not the Bible Belt, it is literally the Snow Belt. I've, I've spent time up there. My wife's from upstate New York. Where? She's from a very small town called Hoosick Falls, which oh. is north of Troy. Oh, wow. I, I, know, I, know, I know Troy. Yeah, I know Troy. Pretty wow, well. that's crazy. Yeah. Um, Syracuse is... Um, yeah, please say something. I don't... The Speedy Sandwich? No. No. D a dinosaur Barbecue. Oh, I've been there. Yeah. I like Dinosaur Barbecue. And I... Um, I there was an article a few years ago, and I was the uh, number eighty-seven most famous uh, person in, to, co to come from Syracuse. Yes. What? Yes, it is true. It, but, uh, really? Yeah. Did uh, first of all, did our pr I don't did know our if you, president go to college there? No. Well, okay. So what they did was they started combining. Like, I thought it was like people from there, but they yeah. started combining. Like he's from Delaware. We all know. Right. Yeah. So they started combining. Yes, but he did go there. But combining like graduates. That's not fair. They're like, like that's Dick, not fair. They're like Dick Clark, and you're like, well, how, no, you know, whatever. That's not right. But um, who's the most famous Syracuse? Tom, Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise is from Syracuse. Tom Cruise grew up in Liverpool. Liverpool, England. Liverpool, New York. Liverpool, New York. Which is a, a small suburb of Syracuse, and uh, I grew up there, right near where he grew up. Uh, was, was born. He was baptized uh, by my uh, great uncle, who also baptized me. And I uh, ran into Tom Cruise at this uh, studio, Santa Monica Studios, years ago. And really, does one run into Tom Cruise? Well, he was he was getting ready for the movie Collateral and one of their sound stages. And mm -hmm. I was running the studio. I was. They had an animation division, and I was running that. Oh, and wow. so we rented out their motion huh. capture stage, and I knew that he was there. And so I would always take that back. My buddy Steve was working there for me at the time. And so I used to take this back hallway in hopes that I would run into him. Sure. And then I never did. And because I was allowed down that hallway and other people couldn't do it. And then one day, I just took the hallway because I was heading that way. And he walks out of his trailer. I didn't even see it. And then I see someone's coming. I hold the door, and it's him. And we walk down this hallway, which is probably 200 feet, and walking right next to him. And you're just like, I want to be like, oh, my my great uncle baptized us, and da da da. And so I was like, oh, you know, like you whatever. Got cruised. I got cruised. I was and in a room with Tom Cruise. I didn't get cruised. You didn't? No. He's very, um, like, I don't say the word approachable, but he's incredibly nice. He has beautiful hair. And and he was like, and he, I don't know if he could see that we were just like, because I think I just turned on, I'm like, hi. And he's like, hey, how you guys doing? Yeah. And he was like, just couldn't, I mean, it's kind of what you hear, but he couldn't have been nicer. I was writing a story about Ron Paul, who uh, was the libertarian candidate for president. Got it. Times. And we were at the, uh, we were, he was being interviewed on, he was a guest on Leno. Okay. So we were at Leno and Tom Cruise was a guest. Oh, nice. And Tom Cruise walked into Ron Paul's dressing room where I was with Ron Paul. Okay. And he's like, Oh, God. Mr. Paul? Oh, who's this? Oh, s***, <laughs> Dan Dunn. Hold on, Dan. Ugh. He, like, knows FBI lingo. He was like, what was he, does, he saying? He doesn't know anything. No. He doesn't know anything. He's very intimidating. I was, I was light on guests for the week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so here we go. This uh, bio of Joel Stein. You know, I could do this bio. Here, the minute I'm wrong, I'll stop. Joel Stein is American journalist. Okay, there you go. Oh, is that, oh, that an, an author and media personality, born on July 23rd, 1971 in Edison, New Jersey, USA. Best known for his humorous and satirical, well, that's not true. It's not that funny. So I also had a poem written about Joel Stein. It's very Stein good at poems. I have it write songs all the time. In the style of Shel Silverstein. Very good. There once was a man named Joel Stein. That's not a just. That's not Joel. I mean, that's, that's, that's not Shell. Shell, yeah. No. His humor was simply divine. With Wait. satire so sharp and wit so keen, he brought laughter to all he'd seen. This is a limerick. It is, but then it just keeps changing styles. Oh, what a great! Is shirt. it Dan? Were you? T is it today? Hey, Dan. Thanks for dressing up for my show. <laughs> it's a great shirt, though. Uh, yeah. Uh, Josh. Could, could you get my two friends uh, a beer? What? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, Dan's our next guest. Th this is Josh. He's a provider. Go through. Go through. 
Good to see you. Crossover. What's up, brother? Good to see you. I'm, ha I'm happy to see you. I was a really bad handshake. You remember Rick from Hey, how are you? It's great to see you. Okay, so let me see. From pop culture to politics, he'd delve. Mm -hmm. when a, with a pen that could rival an elf. That's right. Mm. Uh, his words would twist with glee and leave readers in fits of ecstasy. No. That's the first, about? that's not right. But Joe was, was look at it, past tense. That's, that's accurate. <laughs> was, was more than just a funny guy. He had a knack for making people try to see the world in a different way and question what they'd taken for play. He wrote of masculinity and its flaws and defended the value of cultural draws in a world that oftentimes forgot the power of ideas that could often be wrought. So here's to Joel. It's a toast. Oh. It's a toast. So here's to Joel, a writer of notes, a man here. whose humor will forever float in the hearts of those who laugh and love and cherish the power of a clever craft. Oh, what? that rhymes with laughed. Oh. Yeah, it. Cheers. Oh, you took that one. We did not get to the felt lining. But I feel like I've left you with um, something that you could hide jewelry in. How far did you get? I, not, not, as, not, as, not that far. Not that you, far. I was, I was busy me. with the conversation. This is challenging. It is challenging. Um, but I, you know, I wanted to take a book that was um, uh, big enough, and um, you know that you could keep some of your precious things in it. Um, a microfilm? Microfilm. I don't have any microfilm. Fiche? Film. Microfiche? Yeah. Uh, would be something come, fun to keep in there. Maybe a USB drive with sensitive information. Oh, that's good. That's good. Oh, how about your um, oh, you know, your Bitcoin? You know what? I did a bunch of stories on uh, on Bitcoin. I have a wallet. There you go. I have the, this is where I'll put my... I would, have you talked to those dudes? Yeah. They all are like, I keep them in six different places. I yeah. can't tell you where they are. I'm like, are they your parents' house? Like, <laughs> I can't say. I'm like, they're your parents' house. <laughs> Uh, well, day. now everyone's going to know where it is, so I wouldn't keep it's it in this always book. Maybe, maybe you carve out one of your other books. If you find one of those Sam, you know, B Bankman Freed guys who have a lot of money, you want to rob them, don't go to their house, go to their parents' oh, house. Oh, that's right. Yeah, exactly. And then go into the floorboard of the, of the, of the room they this, grew, grew up in. Find the Dan Brown book. Yeah. <laughs> the floorboard next, <laughs> next like to where the always, penthouses would Always in the floorboard. Yeah. I was like, I was building in my closet, I was building like a safe hidden in the wall, and I was like, what's, what's the first place? Where did you keep porn magazines as a kid? Uh, under a log in the woods. Jesus. That's where I would do my best. That's upstate New York. I well, like that. that's where, yeah, you would kind of, um, my friend's father would get them for the articles. Mm -hmm. And then you would steal them from him. And we'd, we'd steal them. But he must have known, right? But there was, there was so much shame involved that like you could steal yeah, them from him, true. but he couldn't then that's accuse true. you. That's true. Everyone had to pretend they didn't exist. Um, yes, exactly. It's a good deal. Uh, okay, I am being signaled that it's time for the six pack challenge. It's time for the six pack challenge. What you're gonna do is you will get $50 per every question you answer correctly uh, to use in my store, my Pleplius store. I just bought my a Pleplius damn store. sweatshirt from you. Did you really? Because my oh, son, you, my, you gave me a sweatshirt a long time ago. You seem upset. I am upset. Okay. Because it was um, a drinking sweatshirt, uh -huh. and my son loved the sweatshirt, but mm -hmm. eventually he was like, this is a little weird, a drinking sweatshirt. So okay. he went on your website on his own yeah. and picked out some other, because he's a kid, he loves yeah. the fact there's a million pockets. He mm -hmm. picked out some other sweatshirt, yeah. and I had to buy it from his birthday. Mm -hmm. gotcha. And I told you, and you're, gotcha. like, use gotcha my, you're like, use my coupon code, but you didn't include what the coupon code was, so I had to pay full price. So I just spent Wait, a lot I, of money. I, I, you, I told you, I, get, I, said, I sent you a coupon code. No, it said, here's a coupon code, and then it didn't say anything afterwards. What an asshole. It seems, yeah. it seems premeditated. It seemed funny. Yeah. The more I thought about it, I thought it was a joke. I was no, like, I'm the no, jerk. No, definitely not. Yeah. So now you get cash. You get money to use in the store. It's, it's too not, late. Well, you can still buy something for yourself. We have other things in there besides buying sweatshirts He loves for these sweatshirts. Like this, for example, he what I'm no wearing. He has no idea who you are. He, loves you. he just thinks you're a clothing manufacturer of the highest order. Wow. Yeah. He is correct. Well, for every question you answer, Kelly, your son gets a gift. It's $50 to use in the store. I had ChatGBT write this, and what I said to it was, write six trivia questions that are not about Joel Stein, because it kept giving me questions about you, uh, but that he might be able to answer. I had to, it kept trying to have to word it. It kept spitting me out things about you. So here we go. And I don't know whether or not this is true or if you are really someone who would uh, be the authority on such things, mm -hmm. but let's uh, begin. 
Who played the character president Josiah Bartlett in the TV show The West Wing? I did not watch that show, but it was Martin Sheen. It was. Why do you think that was given to you? Um, 50 bucks. By. Is there anything that would associate? If you just give me the coupon code, we wouldn't have to do all this. <laughs> I know, I know, but I'm gonna make you work for it. My goal is to have you. It was here's a coupon code, and then D see dump. you soon. Easy Come question. on my podcast. <laughs> It's like, right. okay, I'll That's go. Right. Yeah. Well, Shane will be the one to send you the coupon codes. Yeah, have sure. you sent them I'm out sure to people yet? No. Uh, what is the name of the oldest continuously inhabited city in the world? That's a great question. Thank you. The oldest? Mm. ChatGPT. And ChatGPT thinks that you would know it. And oh, it was right about the first one. just flew in the beer. Yeah, I know. But it was right about the first one. It's just paper. Um, it was right about the first one. I'm gonna guess it's somewhere in Persia. And by the way, as soon as I'm wrong, just stop this. Stop. Keep, okay. Damascus, Syria. I, it was Persia, Syria, was Persia? I had a general region. General region. I'm sorry. Is that? I meant like, should I think Rome? Should I think you know? Yeah. Constantinople, but it was yeah. okay. I'm sorry. Do you want no. partial credit? No, I don't. Okay. I mean, um, I'm not gonna get it anyway. This matter. is amazing. Write six trivia questions that are not about Joel Stein, but that he may be able to answer. Mm -hmm. What is the chemical formula for water? <laughs> I got this. Okay, go, I got this. Go, go. H2O, uh -huh. two hydrogen, one oxygen. That's, that's correct. That's correct. Stanford. Okay. Uh, who is the only U.S. president to have served two non consecutive terms in office? I would I definitely know it's Grover Cleveland. That's correct. that's correct. So we are up to 150 bucks for your son. I can't believe that. Uh, and what year did the first iPhone become available? Oh, for purchase? we just talked about this. Uh, who did? My wife and I. Okay. And it was more recently than you just, think. Just so you know, when you give me the answer, do I accept like a roundabout? Or are we going for something specific? I think you need the answer. I okay. think you need the year. Um, and I'm only being this generous because I know I'm never going to get it, whatever it is. It's, um, it's much more recently than you think. Okay. I disagree. Th but that's all subjective, right? I'm torn between two numbers. If they're both wrong, we'll move on. Yeah, great. 2007 and 2013. 2007 is 2007. correct. Yeah. $200. Uh, who wrote To Kill a Mockingbird? Uh, Lee, uh, Harper, Lee, Harper Lee. Harper Lee. Yeah. 250 bucks. That is it. That is what you leave here with. Shane will make sure you get it. Yeah. Never gonna um, Yeah, here's the, here's the other one just really quick and then we'll, we'll wrap it up. In Joel Stein's controversial Time Magazine, The Case for Nationalism, what does he argue is the primary reason for the rise of nationalism in America? I never wrote an article called The Case for Nationalism. <laughs> uh, I never. It's like everything I don't believe in. So, what is the answer? Wait, what is the question? He argues, so in, your, in that uh, article that you uh, put someone else's name on it, uh, what does he argue is the primary reason for the rise of nationalism? He says uh, that the rise of nationalism in America is due to a lack of sense of national identity and pride as well as a reaction to globalization and immigration. Wow. The second part makes so sense. sensitive. But the first part isn't even logically tracked. Is okay. that from AI? Yes, it, it all is, yeah. So it says the reason for the rise of nationalism is, read the first part, is what? Uh, due to a lack of sense of national identity. And so pride. the rise of nationalism is because there was a, a lack, lack of pride? Of, yeah, exactly. Of, of being, yeah, right, it's true, you're, right, you're correct. I'm not, I'm not like. Do you know that. that there is a show called, and I don't know if you know about this, it was called uh, Forever, um, it's a it's a it's an AI show about. Um, it's called Nothing Forever, and it's a. Uh, oh, I read I wrote about this. The Seinfeld. Oh, thing. you wrote about that. Okay. I did write it for Wired. It's a, it's a yeah. show about nothing forever. So it was Seinfeld. And correct me if I'm wrong. Just stop me whenever I'm wrong. It was basically a it, AI wrote it. Looked it looked like Roblox. Yeah, and, and like, it was uh, like what do you, Minecraft. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. And then it was just continuous. It ran it, forever. It, it, meaning, meaning, there wasn't episodes. It was just always on. No, it was always and on. And people would go and watch it for hours and hours at a time. Yeah, and then there was uh, uh, it would go. The two locations were his apartment, and then the stand-up, the mic. Correct. And he said on the mic something uh, that was a observation that was taken as transphobic, and then they shut it down. So I didn't. This is going to get controversial. I didn't think the comment that the computer generated was that transphobic. And by the way, um, the, but and by, and by the way, the computer said it. So what was the you know? Well, that was the interesting part, which is like, if you are if. So Sam Altman's been really careful with ChatGPT three and what it pulls from and what it's allowed to say. Mm -hmm. 
But if you just let AI do its thing using the whole of the web as its right. database. It's going to pull other people's opinions. It's going to pull some crazy stuff. Yeah, I mean, right. If, you, if it's using 4chan, if it's using just people's, you know, yeah. chats, it's going to, people turns out are pretty uh, transphobic and racist and stuff. Yeah, so yeah. It's, and, and so, Especially when they can hide behind. And so it really becomes anonymity. an interesting moral question of like, do you want this to actually be an intelligence that's replicating human thought? Or yeah. is there someone who's going to decide what's acceptable or right. not? And who right. should that person be? Right. Um, and, and, and it was. We, we, um, we, found, we, we found the limit of... But the more interesting thing to me, and I actually like interviewed people that should have called you. I called like Whitney Cummings and some other people for my article. And... Um, the question was really why is ChatGPT unable to be funny? Because Seinfeld is not. Oh, right. You can watch that Seinfeld all day long. He never comes up with a joke. Yeah, there was there was like they they listed like two jokes and they're just like, eh, that's not so great. They're they're really bad. And most of yeah. them don't even make sense. And they're yeah. not. It, it was and AI is good at some things, not apparently poetry, but um, <laughs> it, it really. I will, I will disagree. It, it's not suited for telling a joke because a joke is when you take the expectation and you subvert it that's a right. bit, right? That's right. And what AI is doing is trying to just meet the expectation. That's right. Right? It's yep. like, what is, the, what is the word that most commonly follows this word? That's right. And right. so it's really, really it can't, it can't quite come up with surprise. It can't, no. It can't do the unexpected because it's, it it's feels like its job is the, to do the expected. The math is not that hard on comedy, but it's still math. Um, yeah, well. And, and it has a lot of trouble. I'll, dis I'll disagree. What happened? No, I just. You, go, you Google something. Yeah, then say it. So I, I want to do this on the road, just as, because I think it's funny. Yeah. I, I started uh, telling AI to write like five minutes sets. Okay. Out of curiosity. Yeah. And it's so funny how unfunny it is. Yeah. But I want to like do videos of me doing AI sets from like hotel room. Like, yeah. And then adding in laughter where it's like, Oh, yeah, <laughs> where, like, where it expects it, yeah. Of, and so it's like, hey, how's everyone doing tonight? Good? Great. So I'm here to make you laugh. Or at least give you a good chuckle. If I fail, just remember I'm doing this for free, and then like big eruption of laughter. <laughs> you know, I've been trying to lose weight recently. I heard that laughter burns calories, so I figured I'd give stand up a shot. If that doesn't work out, I'll just have to resort to eating celery and drinking water like a rabbit. And like really just, I mean, it's it's ridiculous. But it's, but it is. But you know what? If you said this uh, in a, a kindergarten classroom, you might bring down the house. But if you deliver, I think it'd be so funny. To yeah. Deliver it sincerely as a yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah, that's fun. Yeah, I think that's funny. But that's what's funny is the unexpected understanding that. So, um, how did you get so far? Because I just went at it towards the end. I got angry. Are you just much stronger than me? Yes. So here's the thing. I put my weight into it. So here's the thing. Uh, did you really? I, yeah. You got light-colored clothing that blood would just go really well with. If you have people hurt themselves in this show? Femoral, it's called your femoral artery, and you're getting awfully close to it. And if you if you puncture it, there won't be enough time for any of us to save. Is you. that another fifty bucks you'll never send me? <laughs> yeah, exactly right. You really want to get down to the bottom of it. If we were to focus on the task and not talk at all, I think we would have done it. I don't think so. What we would have done is taken this beautiful felt lining and lined the inside of it like that and made some slits there and, and then glued it in and it would have been like this beautiful presentation. But, but this will still work. It'll still work. Like by the way, like this looks ratty from here, you know what I mean? But if but if it just goes on the on the shelf and then there I have in my like I probably would keep my ammunition in there. Yeah. So a craft not yet complete. It looks fantastic. You did it, you you nailed it. You couldn't tell. Joel Stein, thank you very much. Thanks for having you, me. You killed it.